Please pray with me. I just can't get those words out of my head. People need you, Jesus. We need you. We need you. The world needs you. And so, Lord, we thank you that you gather with us here today. That we may worship you. That we may grow in you, Lord. Lord, thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being close. Lord, bless our time this morning. Lead us in your word. Guide us in your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good morning, family. All right, kids, you are dismissed to Children's Church with Miss Annie. She's ready for you. I love the little stompy as they go. <laughs> I heard some good door stories as I was walking around. I have a door story for you. It's a door story that happens to me every single day I go to work <laughs> at Grace Christian School. So we are a closed campus where Isaac and I actually happen to work together. I don't know, do you recognize this person? <laughs> um, and if you ever go there, there you, you need to come through the front office because we're a closed campus so we can have security and keep the kids safe when they come to school. Very important thing. Um, but we have this glass door, and, but you can't see through it because it's got a coating on it. And people come to that door and they pull on that door like all day long. Thunk, 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 thunk. And the reason they do that is because um, our office manager is generally so astute. Like, she's got such good eyes, and she's got that door open before they can even get there, usually. But people who get there and the door is not wide open are very frustrated because they're just pulling and pulling and pulling on that door. So that's the sound of my day when I'm working at my desk. Thunk, 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 thunk. That's, it's exactly that rhythm and pattern. Um, and then once they figure out that nobody's coming, then they ring the doorbell and somebody answers the door. Um, so we're talking about doors today, but not just doors, um, because actually our scripture passage talks about another I am statement in which um, Jesus says, I am the gate. But in some translation, it says door, and kind of the essential thing we're talking about is um, a passage from one place to another. Sometimes you need to get from one place to another through a door. Sometimes you need to get to one place um, to another through a gate, but basically a gate, a door, identifies a boundary. You're on one side or the other of it, right? You're inside or you're out. Um, I was thinking about even these gates over here at this preschool, when they put, aren't they so pretty? They used to be just this chain link, right? And then they put up this really nice gate with a latch that's up nice and high where the children can't get to it. And what if, I was just thinking, what if, that gate just got left open or did not exist. What would happen? We'd have preschoolers all over the place because, so, right? Because sooner or later they'd figure out like, ooh, I'm not stuck in here. I can go out and I can run around, right? And yes, there's a parking lot with traffic. Um, and we have so much traffic on our campus these days between the food pantry and the preschool and the church, all of which is wonderful and amazing which makes that gate even more important. The other purpose of that gate, though, is to keep those children not just inside, but to keep other people outside. Because if somebody who doesn't belong walks through that gate, there's a problem as well, right? And so that way the adults have one place to look at, as opposed to having to monitor the entire perimeter. They know that they hear that gate, they turn around and they need to see who's coming in. Most likely it's gonna be somebody's parent, grandparent, you know, but they're on alert and they can make sure that those kids are nice and safe. So boundaries can be really, really good things. But do you guys like to be locked out of things? Most people don't like the kind of boundaries that say you, you're not allowed to go there, right? So, you know, we kind of have some different feelings about those things. And so today we're gonna talk about a boundary and uh, specifically in this, I am the gate passage. Um, and so we, to kind of set us up for where we're at in scripture, I'm going to back us up a little ways from where um, Jesus makes this I am statement so that we can know who Jesus is talking to and why it's important. So back in John 9, 
Jesus healed a man who was born blind. It's the whole, if you can recall with me, it's the whole passage with the spit and the mud, and he wipes it on his eyes, and he says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Um, and then the man can see. And everybody knew this guy grew up blind, and there was this idea that it was some kind of generational sin, and he was a bad guy for some reason. But he was literally just born blind. And when, when the religious leaders saw this guy, they called him in, they questioned him, they questioned his parents. There was no doubting it. He'd been healed, and Jesus was the one who had healed them. But they didn't believe it. And so the man went out, and Jesus went out and had a conversation with him because he wanted to make sure that the guy understood exactly what had happened. And he said, who do you say has healed you? And he's like, well, thought about it a little bit and kind of reasoned and said, well, only God can heal. And then Jesus says, yeah, you're looking at him. It's me. I'm the son of God. Not in those exact words. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Um, and so those who were standing by and heard this interaction were, yes, his disciples, those who were following him, but not just that. It said that Pharisees were present. They were present. And so um, Jesus has this thing to say right at the end of John 9, verses 40 through 41. It says, I've come into the world to exercise judgment so that those who don't see can see, and those who see will become blind. Sounds a little bit like a riddle. Some Pharisees who came with him heard what he said and asked, Surely we aren't blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you wouldn't have any sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. So the idea here is that, you know, if, if you couldn't see what had happened right in front of your face, that this man who literally could not see now sees, and that it was through my power, well, then you are blind, right? Um, you say you see, but you don't really see, and so your sin remains. And that leads us into John 10, 1. So it's the very end of 9, and then boom, we're into 10, and Jesus starts talking about sheep. <laughs> and he gives this analogy. He tells this story about sheep and thieves and shepherds and a sheep pen. And that starts at John 10, and it's, we're going to go through verses 1 through 6 first. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he gathers all of his sheep, he goes before them, and they follow him, because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but they will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this, those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. Kind of, you know, not really surprising because Jesus was just talking about being blind and seeing, and then he starts talking about sheep and shepherds and um, sheep pens. <laughs> So we're going to unpack it a little bit, but the analogy starts with sheep, and the sheep, you know, sometimes we think that sheep are unintelligent animals, like we've used that term, like people are sheep, as like a um, kind of a derogatory theme, but, but in this analogy, that's not what's happening at all, right? The sheep actually can hear, know, and recognize who's calling them and go to the correct shepherd. The sheep are valued, they are loved, they are important, they are sustenance to their shepherd. They also can recognize false shepherds. And the sheep are kept in a sheep pen. We have a, I put a picture up. So this is kind of during Jesus' time what a sheep pen would have sort of look like. There's all kinds of pictures and ideas, but generally it would have been a pen made out of 
rocks, most likely, but sometimes sticks, branches, whatever the sheep herders uh, or shepherd. I'm messing, that word is just in my head, messing up. Uh, whatever the shepherd would have been able to make it with. Um, and they'd be about three feet high. Um, you know, they just piled up some rocks, and they made a safe space to keep those sheep in. They would generally be spaces that shepherds would share, so there'd be more than one flock in there. Um, so think about this. You've got more than one flock of sheep. Eh, 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 full of sheep, okay? Um, and the shepherds literally can go in and call their flock by name. They hear the voice, and they can separate themselves and follow their shepherd. It's pretty cool. So this, this sheep pen would be this place of safety, though. It would be where the sheep would be taken at the end of the day. After a day of grazing, they'd bring them in there, and it was a place to keep them safe. And they would take turns keeping watch over the sheep, keeping them safe so that animals wouldn't come in and get them, right? Because when they're out in the pasture and grazing during the day, which obviously is lovely for them as well, they're vulnerable. And at night, they're even more vulnerable because the animals that will attack them tend to be nocturnal, tend to be out at night hunting for them. So it's this place of safety. So there's, there's this shepherd who leads them in, who loves them. The, shep the, the sheep are good. They have a good life. They're loved, they're cared for, they're known. And then there's the thief, the outlaw, the one who is uninvited, the one who sneaks over the gate, not over the gate, over the, over the wall, even though he's not supposed to, right? He doesn't belong there. He's not invited. It's not his place. Nobody wants him. And let's talk about who this person is. So at that time, there were issues with people that were false prophets. There were people claiming to be the Messiah. And clearly they weren't because there's only one Messiah. And they were trying to lead, lead the sheep astray for all kinds of really probably terrible, selfish um, reasons that had to do with power and money um, and so those were the people trying to lead them astray, lead them in, in paths of faith that had nothing to do with Jesus, that had nothing to do with the one we know to be true God, true man. And so, thank you, Joe. Um, but after Jesus, like, puts this all out, they don't understand. It says... Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying at all. And I sort of feel it's like Jesus saying, come here. I'm going to tell you a little bit. Come here. Get in close. You don't understand? Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to really give it to you in these next few lines, all right? So John 10, 7 through 10 says, Jesus spoke again. I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and outlaws. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and they will go out and they will find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so that they could, have, they could live life to the fullest. The gate to the sheep pen is the only legitimate way to get into that pen, right? Climbing over the wall is not the legitimate way. It's not true entry into that pen. And then Jesus, and Jesus says this, and then Jesus says, but I'm the gate. So the only true way to enter into being the people of God, the sheep, is through the gate through Jesus. This pen is this place to find rest for those sheep where they don't have to be on guard or afraid or vigilant. And Jesus is saying, that's me. I am the, I am the way into that kind of peace. That peace only comes by entering in through me. You can try to take shortcuts, 
right? There will be people that will lead you astray and try to make you think that you're going to have salvation in some other way, but it's not the truth. The truth is, is that that passageway is narrow. It's small. Go back to the picture, would you? Sorry. I fooled you. Obviously, this is an illustration, but even if you look at pictures of old, like, they do have ancient ones that still exist to this day. Um, they look very similar to this. Look at that space. There's not a lot of space. In fact, the sheep kind of have to get organized to be able to even get out or in through that space, which is why they need the shepherd to help them out with that. But it's a small window, a small door, a small gate to get in to that place. And so as much as, you know, Jesus says, I'm the gate, and we see that, like, he's kind of talking about a small space, that gate is so accessible, right? It's not hard to find. He's not hiding it. He's the way. He is the gate. There's thieves out there still, right? You know, motivated by the wrong things, motivated by evil. They'll tell you all kinds of wrong things, you know. I don't know, have you guys heard the one, all road leads, all road leads to God, all roads, right? How can that be true? It can't, because he says, I am the gate. I am the way. Jesus is it. Not all roads, right? Jesus, it's very, very simple. We, there are people that will try to complicate it. There will be people that will tell you, yeah, you don't need the church. Well, of course we need the church. Sheep do way better together, don't they? Yeah. And that's a gift that he gave us. That's how we get to be together in Jesus. There will people, be people out there that will tell us, thieves that will say, you know, you're foolish for believing in Jesus and try to steal your joy, and try to steal everything that Jesus came to give us. They don't get to win, right? Because we know, we know. And Jesus doesn't just pr promise, you know, yeah, this is just the gate into me, but he says he came so that we could live life and live it to the fullest. He came for our salvation as well as our eternal life. And we're not like stuck, you know, it's, it's funny, like you look at this and you think, oh, that's almost like kind of like a, like a prison in a way, right? It could be if you were stuck inside and you couldn't get out. But the scripture tells us that, that he's the kind of gate that you can pass in and out of. It doesn't mean you leave him, but it does mean that you can go out and find pasture and if you think about it, like, it's this call to the world, man. We need to get out there, and when we're in the pasture, we need to be sharing the gate. We need to be talking about Jesus so that others might come back with us and join us in this place of rest and peace that he's provided. We get to open the gate. and We want to open the gate for others, too. We want to pass through that. We want to enter into his rest enter into his peace, enter into life with him, enter into that abundant life that he offers. So let us open the gate. Let's go through it. That's what he's called us to. It's the only way. There aren't any others. He's been pretty clear. He is the only way. So let us enter through the gate together. Will you pray with me? Oh, Jesus, we love you and we need you. We need you so desperately. And Lord, you just set it out so clearly for us. You are the gate. You are the door that any boundary that would keep us from you, Lord, Lord we can just, we can push off and walk through you, Lord. There are those that would keep us from that gate. But God, we pray against that. Lord, we pray against that, and we pray for them that they would walk through that gate as well. Lord, as your church, gather us together to share the good news.
that you have made a way through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, that we can confess our faith, belief, and love for him, Lord, and know you and walk through that gate. In Jesus' name, amen.